Hi again, welcome to another video, and today I'm gonna to be doing some work on my Mercedes Sprinter van. It's a 2004 model, uh, medium wheelbase, and the job I'm gonna be doing on it today will be the front ball joint. I've already done one, I've done the other side, so I'm gonna do this one today. So what I'll do, I'll get it jacked up, take the wheel off, and I'll bring you back in then, and I'll show you how I take the old one out and put the new one in. So I have the van jacked up, I've got the wheel off, and I've got a stand under there for safety, and that's a ball joint there. I need to get that nut off, that big nut. So what I'm gonna try and do is use the impact, and it's a 30 millimeter, that is. So let's see if we can get it off like this. Uh, we can, that worked really well. So what I'm going to do now is just screw that nut back on a little bit. Well, actually, probably until I get the threads nearly through it. But this part is going to be thrown away because it's the old ball joint. So what I'm going to do then is I'm gonna let the jack down, put the jack under there, so I'm pushing up, and then hopefully I can bang that and it should pop the ball joint out. That's the plan anyway. So I'll get the jack repositioned and we'll do that. So I've now got the jack positioned underneath the ball joint, so I'm gonna jack it up until it actually takes the whole weight of the van. I think I'm there, just gonna check. So this is the tiring bit. I've gotta hit that hard there to pop the ball joint. So see how many hits it takes until that pops. Hopefully not many. So, the ball joint has popped. I don't know how many times I hit it after it popped, but I, I looked and I noticed it had gone. So, that's good, that was hard work. If I'd have had a ball joint splitter, that would have been brilliant, but I haven't got one. Uh, for car repairs, I'm quite limited what tools I have got. I'm trying to add to them as I go along. Um, but, yeah, at the moment, I've just got to work with what I have. And today, it was a good old hammer, the old fashioned way. So, what we're going to do now, I'm going to take it off of the jack. I'm going to let the jack down, so I'm back on the axle stand. And then I've got to get that out of there. So I have to disconnect the shock absorber. And then I can get the tool. I have got the sort of special tool for getting the ball joint out. So what I'll do, I'll reposition everything, and then I'll be back with you. So now what I've got to do is undo that bolt there, and there's one underneath there for the shock absorber, and there's two the other side. I have just took that out of there, because it holds in there, so I need that out of the way to undo these bolts. There's one shock absorber bolt still to come undone. I'm just gonna do that now. See, everything's released now. I have got to put a new shock absorber on this as well because the shock absorber is no good. So I'll sort out that afterwards, but I'll get this ball joint done first. Now we should be able to maneuver it around to get that off of there. But it did get stuck in a little bit again, but see, that's all free now. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna swing this out of the way and put it on something beside me. I did it off camera on a block of wood or something. So that's out of the way. So I've just got that wishbone bit with the ball joint in in front of me. So then I can work on getting that ball joint out. This is a new ball joint here. 
And how it fits in is it just pushes in and then splines hold it in place. The old one obviously has got them splines on and that's held in and that's been in there a long time. So it's not that easy to push them out. So I'll set up the tool I've got, I'll show you that. And then I'll have to give it some heat as well. And then we'll get that one out and then get this one in. So I've set this tool up. It's not actually how it came. Them bolts weren't in it when I got it. That was supposed to work to push them out, but the threads went on that. I think it was about 70 or 80 pounds this tool. And I complained and they gave me my money back and never wanted the tool back. So what I did is just put two long bolts in. So instead of that going down, pushing it out, these come up as I tighten them. And that seems to work. I used them on my VWT4 when I did the ball joints on that. And yeah, it works on this too. So there's a cup at the bottom there and that allows the ball joint to go through there. And there's a bit on there that's connected to that pit that will push it out, hopefully. So what I'm gonna do is just do it up a little bit so it closes it to there. And then I'll bring you back in for when I'm trying to and push his old ball joint out. It may not go very easy, so I'll put some heat around there, and that usually does a trick. So now I have the tool done up tight now. I haven't started trying to push it out yet, but I'll do that now. There isn't a clip or anything in there, it just pushes out. I should have put some WD-40 in it first, but I'm just gonna go for it, and it might push out without heat, it might need heat. And you'll probably notice I've turned the tool round a bit, because for some reason this side, that seems to all be in the way a lot more than on the other side. And I think I already had the shock absorber out on the other side and it makes the job much easier if you have the shock absorber out. There's only one bolt inside the cab and that would have come out, but I'm just gonna go how it is at the moment and we'll see if this comes out. If it doesn't, like I said, I'll put some heat around there and then we'll use that method. But it might just come, we'll see. And what I'm gonna do is just use the impact on the speed three and yeah. Hopefully it will do it. Just try and go down evenly each, each side. Best you sort of can really. I don't believe it's going to come out this way um, without heat. So I'll get the heat gun and we'll give it a bit of heat. So make sure you don't burn any pipes or anything, but there's nothing really much near here. So give it a blast with some of this heat. <laughs> So we'll give that a bit of heat now. So I'll see if it has helped. I'm not sure whether it's done any good yet, but we'll take down a bit this side. touch it yeah I'm sure we've got that moving so what I'll do is just go backwards and forwards and that should pop out I would advise you to take the shock absorber out because it's really been in the way it has gone on though the ball joint
it's out. So you can see how hard that would be without that tool and without the impact. This is a big Dewalt, the big boy. So yeah, it does really, really help. Last time I did these on my T4, I did it manually and it was hard work. So see, I got that, it wasn't too hard. It was never gonna be easy, but with these tools, did make it a lot easier than would be doing it manually. So what I'm gonna do is unbolt all that now to take that out and then we'll get the new ball joint in. There's a torque shock absorber bolt. It's right underneath where your jack and your things for if you get a puncher are. This time I didn't undo it with the impact, so I've just got to do it manually, but it's not that bad to do. It's easier if you've got a ring spanner. I haven't got one, it's a 24, I think. Well, I say I haven't got one. I haven't got one here. But we're getting there. I won't take it fully off, but it's dropped. So now I've got Laura underneath. She's just holding it up just so I can take this nut off. And then we'll go round and we'll see her. Uh, just take it out. I'm bring the torch with us. So just lower that down, Laura. And then just take it out of the way. In the kit I've got that takes the ball joint out and fits it back in, there isn't a ring piece that's right for around there. So what I had to do the other side was take the dust cover off and then one of them does fit. I've only got to remove that metal clip thing in there and then just refit it afterwards. So it's not a big issue. So I'll do that and then I'll see you back over at the van and then we'll get this ball joint in. So I'm back over at the van. I have the new ball joint there. I've took that dust cover off. The reason, like I explained, was because that ring wouldn't fit over with the dust cover on. And that fits really nice there. So I should put it in really good. I have got this bit as well, which I put over there. The reason I put it over there is as this goes into place, that dome bit at the top actually is higher than that. So if I had something flat there, it wouldn't work. It has to have something with a bit of a space in it so that can go into there. So that'll work for that. And then that'll go like that. And then I, put the tool round and pull it together. So I'll just get the tool set up and then I'll show you it going in. And I'll just do that with the impact as well. So now I have the tool set up. So we're ready to pull this ball joint in. I have just got to wind the tool up a little bit just to pull it together. I will do that uh, off camera and then I'll show you when it's pulling it all in. But all it is, is that ring at the bottom. That's all I've got there now. And I've got that piece at the top, which I mentioned that dome bit can go into. So yeah. We'll just get this pulled together a bit and then we'll go for pulling the ball joint in. So now I have it pulled so it's tight. I haven't started pulling it in yet, but I've got to try and get it in as even as I can. It's hard to do it um, perfectly even, but I'll just go up on one side. I'll start with this side because I think it started to go in slightly more on this side. So I'll do this side first and then I'll just go backwards and forwards until it's in. It's pulling in okay.
So how I had it, it almost got it in, but it's still a millimetre or two off being totally in. So I've reset the tool because that bottom bit was hitting on the back, stopping it from going totally in. So I've just added that bit to it. So it should push it fully in now. Yeah, it looks to be fully in now. So I just had to do that bit for the last bit and yeah, I got it in. So yeah, it all worked well. Uh, it takes a bit of a battering and really how I've done it, I could do with having some spare bolts because the threads have got pretty poor on them now. But when I'm next to the nut and bolt shop, I'll get a couple of spares just so they're in the box for next time I use this tool. Uh, so what I'm gonna do now is just take the tool off and then we can start getting it all fitted back together. So now I'm going to get this new shock fitted. I've had to wait a few days because I needed to order a new one of these. This is the dust cover that fits on there. And all that happens is that part just clips on that part. Like that. It didn't come with a new shock. You'd actually think it would, but it, it didn't. But that's all in place now. So that goes on like that and then we could push that through and then get the nut on the other side so i'll take this back over to the van so i have the new shock over at the van so i'm just gonna put that through there and i can push it down a bit so i can let that go through there. So what I'm gonna do now, I'll do this off camera because you saw us take the nut off earlier. I'm gonna send Laura inside just to loosely put the nut on top of there. So that'll be secure. And then I can get this part back on the ball joint and then I've just got to bolt the shock to this part. So now the shock is in place, what I'm gonna do now is take that ball joint nut off and I've straightened the steering so I can get this part back on the ball joint. So I'm going to do that now. I'm still on the block, but I'm going to be lifting it off of the block and then straight on to there like that. Let's get that nut started and that'll take all the weight, which it has. So now what I've got to do is get the shock bolts back through the shock and into there, to this side and to the other side. So I'll try and do that now. So the other shock bolt at the bottom, I got that started. So now I'm gonna get this one started. Which it is, so I have one more to go. So I have the four started now. So I'm just ready to tighten them up with the impact. Just make sure when you're putting it all back together that you don't pinch that. Um, I need that out of the way still. It does locate into there when I'm done, but I've got to get to that bolt first. So what I'm gonna do now is turn the steering the other way and tighten the other two up and then go over them with a breaker bar at the end just to check they're tight. So I just have these two shock absorber ones to check now. I've done the other side ones. They're all tight and I've gone up with a breaker bar just to make sure, because I don't trust the impact. I have had it kick back before and then it sort of loosened them a little bit. So I always check with a breaker bar to be 100% sure they're tight. That one is nice and tight. And so is that one. So now I can put that in there and all that is done. 
So all I've got to do now is tighten up the ball joint nut. I'm gonna do that with a breaker bar because I can't get the impact under there at the moment and I can't jack it up any higher. So it's not gonna be many turns to tighten that anyway. And then I'll know it's tight with the breaker bar. So I'll just do that. So what's happened, as I've tried to tighten it, I've got to wear the nylock pieces in the nut and it's just turning because all it is is a ball in the other end of the ball joint. So the thread will keep turning until the tapered part grips. So I'm hoping just by putting a ch chisel in there, just to sort of lift it up a bit, I'll get it to, I'll get it to bite and then it should all be good. Yeah, I've got it now. So now I'll get my stronger breaker bar on it just to get it fully tight. And that's nice and tight now. So all I have left to do is the nut on top of the shock absorber. So we'll just show you that. So now I'm gonna tighten the top shock absorber bolt. I'm gonna go with the impact for a start. It may spin, if it does, I'll have to do it manually. We'll just see how it goes, I might get lucky. If I hadn't been able to tighten it with the impact, I'd have had to have done it manually by putting a spanner on like that and then getting an Allen piece like that and then holding the middle from turning as I tightened it like that. So if you haven't got an impact, that's how you do it. So apart from putting the wheel back on, it's all done now. So I've replaced the ball joints on both sides and the shocks on both sides as well. So this is ready for its MOT in that department now. There is other work to do on this van, but that'll be featured in different videos. I'll just show you inside, now that everything's back in its place. That's where your tools are, your jack and your um, spanner for changing the wheel if you get a puncher. All that happens is you just twist that round and that panel pops out and it's all under there. So, that's all back in its place and that is all sorted under there. So I hope you've enjoyed this video of me doing the bottom ball joint and shock on my Mercedes Sprinter van. The ball joint, as you saw, is quite a task. It's not an easy job, but if you have the right tools, it's not that bad as I've shown in the video. And also if you've got the heat gun as well, that does help a lot. I'm not sure I'd have got that ball joint out without the heat. So that's job done. So thanks for watching and I'll be along with another video again soon. So bye for now.